praise the Lord. I hope we are enjoying ourselves. I believe all of us, we are very happy today. Because we are all going home, renewed wife and renewed husbands. Amen? As I told us before, you know, sexual relationship in marriage, it is something that people shy away from. You know, a lot of people, they don't like talking about it. A lot of Christians, they shy away from it. And that is why many a times you see some mistakes that people dumble into. But after today's lesson, I know that each and every one of us, our bedroom, we receive renewal. Amen? In, in summary this evening, I would like to stress on the different um, sexual positions. You know, I gave each and every one of us the pamphlet. I would like to revisit that area because after today's lesson, I found out that a lot of people are confused about it. As uh, Dr. Godwin has already told us, you know, one position every time, it becomes monotonous. And we know that anything monotonous, it makes the interest to go away. And because we are heaven-bound Christians, we don't want anything that Satan will hold hand to get us to be defied. And so after today, as you go home and practice different positions, you can see that some of those things that make your husband's eye to go zigzag will no more be there. Hallelujah. But before I explain again the issue of the variety of positions, I want to deal more on this aspect of uh, anxiety. As I went out, some, I've already started receiving phone calls. Some people are so anxious that they are not able to satisfy their husbands. And as I taught us earlier, if you don't know your anatomy, if you don't know how your body system is, you may not be able to direct your husband on the part of your body that turns you on. I discovered that a lot of our sisters, they are so shy about it. I know how many of them, I ask them, do you know where is the clitoris? They don't know. Where is the labia? They don't know. Although we are not trying to take you into the medical school, but at least the elementary knowledge of your body matters a lot. So when you go home today as married couples, make sure that you explore your husband's body and let your husband explore your own body. And that part of the body that helps you to tune on, allow your husband to explore that area and let him be aware of it. Don't feel shy. He's your husband. Some people feel that their husband will tell them that they have spoiled. As somebody made that comment today after the teaching, that if she do like that, the husband will feel that she has spoiled. There's nothing like that. You are not in friendship. You are husband and wife. Number two, Number two area I would like to stress what is uh, the issue of uh, the standing position in the variety. You know, some of you told me that it's not in the pamphlet I gave to you. You know, the getting sexual pleasure in standing position, it depends on the height. As I mentioned before, you know, if my husband is very tall, Standing position may not be okay. So, in that area, 
you can choose other varieties. I think I gave us about five, no, seven varieties. So it is not compulsory that you must use a particular position. The one that is not okay for two of you, you can change to another one. Are you understanding? Then the, another area I would like to look into is the hindrances to sexual pleasure. We discover that a lot of people that have sexual problems, they don't know how to go about it. And as I told us, the time I was teaching the women, it is not every doctor that can handle sexual problems. It is not every psychologist that you can go to. And as our, our mommy, Malu, taught us, you know, it is good for you to pray that God will direct you to the right person. And also, when you have problem, open up. Especially in our midst, there are other medical personnel that can help you. Don't bottle up your problem. Some people have what we call inhibited sexual desire. What we call low libido. Libido means sexual urge. Some people say it is very, very much low. Why? Number one is uh, uh, fatigue. I've told us the issue of uh, having two more children. Maybe later we'll go over to the issue of family planning. It is one of the things that drive away sexual pleasure in some women. Then I also reminded us about uh, a rare failure in our husbands. Dr. Godwin have already mentioned it. Some of us sisters our tongue is not yet born again. And I pray that after today, our tongue will be sanctified in Jesus' name. It is not the time that your husband is approaching you for sex. You remember the children's school fees. It is not that time you remember house rent. It is not that time you remember one thing or the other. You know that touches the man's emotion. You know, when a man is ready for sex, any small thing, he can immediately get discouraged and get flabby. Women, have you noticed that? So please, let us know the right word to speak to our husbands. It is not that time you will complain about, you know, those the petty, petty things. Some of us women, we are full of nagging. But I pray that that spirit of nagging will be off from our life today in Jesus' name. So please, know the right word to speak to your husband at the right time. So because of this erectile failure, although there are some disease conditions that can cause that, but psychologically, a man is readily put off. When you bring up some matters that affect him psychologically and emotionally. Cure for sexual problems, the practical and medical aspects. Number one, for a man's sexual problem or a woman's sexual problem to be properly taken care of, you have to find out the root cause of the problem. Some women that were sexually abused when they were growing up, they are the ones that usually fall into the group of people we say they are frigid. And so husbands, in that aspect, try to find out why your wife doesn't respond to you. Some people spiritualize everything. And in this era of attack, anything is attack. Everything is attack. So let us know that when a woman is sexually abused, when they are growing up, it usually leads to what we call frigidity. Number two, it is not only the women that we know how to talk to their husbands. Our husbands, we also need petting words. 
Immediately, you tell your wife, ah, this one you are looking like your mother. Everything has gone off. This woman will continue to look to herself in the mirror. So I'm now old. So I'm now looking like my mama. Oh. So let us be very careful. Some ways you tell your wife. And we women, learn to shave your armpits. Cleanliness. Learn to use toothpick. Learn to clean your tongues well. Learn to brush your mouth morning and night. And if you eat some native foods, like all those uh, native foods in the village, like uh, uh, oil bean tree and other that give mouth order, or some salads, make sure you wash your mouth well. And some of you that like garlic very well, if your husband doesn't like it, make sure you pest before you come to him. And then women, try to find out if your husband likes you to shave your pubic area. Some men, when they are touching the pubic hair, it has to turn them on. So, if you know that your husband doesn't like you to look like a small girl in that aspect, please don't join others to shave. You are there to please each other. So find out the root cause of your wife's, of your wife not being tuned on. S some people, it is what we call psychosomatic. Maybe throughout the day, this woman has some problems with you already. Maybe there are some underlying problems that was not taken care of. And then in the night after food, the next thing you start to dry her clothes. She may just turn off, and no matter whatever you do, she will not open up. So when you find out the root cause of a problem and handle it well, your wife will loosen up. You know, women, we have only one, only one padlock, only one key. Once the husband discovers that and opens up that key, we open up. Ordinary just talking to your wife, oh, you are the only woman that, if not you, in short, I would have been a bachelor till now. When you speak to your wife like that, she will just do like this, do like that. She open up. Praise the Lord. Adequate arousal. Adequate arousal. Some men, they don't arouse their wives well. What is her breast doing? What is her lips doing? What is her clitoris doing? God provided these things in a woman so that your bedroom will be full of pleasure. If you don't know how to kiss, let you and your wife sit down. Ask her, how do I put my mouth? How do I put my tongue? Do you like this way? Do you like this the other way? Two of you are best of friends. She will tell you, you will practice that, and the one that you know that turns her on, you choose that method. Don't allow your wife's clitoris to remain like that because she will not be wet enough. I showed women KY jelly. KY jelly is very good. It doesn't have any odor. It doesn't stain. It is very cheap. If you cannot afford KY jelly, you can use pure coconut oil to lubricate your private parts. You can use Gynamate vagina cream. There are a lot of them. So if you are not able to get any of them, I've given you my phone number. Go ahead and call. By the grace of God, you will be helped. While I am spending more time on this area of arousal and lubrication is because if a woman is not well aroused and her private part lubricated well, the man will find it difficult to penetrate and that may lead to some bruises. And then medically, I told her there are some injections that can be used. Dr. Godwin has already told us about the androgens. 
testosterone. There are some severe conditions. When a woman's libid is so low, we can advise that injection testosterone may be given. I said may, I didn't say must. But before ever it will reach to that extent, we would have already explored other methods. There are some disease conditions that is so detrimental to a man's health and to a woman's health. Dr. Godwin has also mentioned it. As I mentioned it during our own women forum, the issue of hypertension. Women, if your husband has high BP, please know how to relate with him, especially in sexual matters. During your ovulation, which is your heat period, you know, a woman demands more sex that time. Please, if your husband is not able to meet up because of his health condition, don't molest him. Don't compare him with another man. Maybe when you were an unbeliever. Don't compare your husband with your ex. That time you were an unbeliever. Remember, we are now in a different world. May the Lord help us to control our tongues in Jesus' name. And then those that their husbands are not yet born again. I told us the danger of excessive alcohol. So when you go home, take this lesson down to your husband. Those that their husbands are yet unbelievers. Let them know the danger of excessive alcohol as it relates to lovemaking. And finally... Let the couple learn to talk with each other. Those from morning, afternoon, night, learn to talk with each other. Learn those languages that will help your husband to be happy. And then don't bottle evil in your heart. Offenses. If your husband offended you, please, don't wait in the night to punish him in the bedroom. You know, some women, they will just lie down like wood. You never finish. Do quick, quick now. I beg. Mm -mm -mm. Just because you are angry. So whatever your husband has done against you, please do not allow the son to go down on your anger. Express it to him so that two of you can flow. Thank you. If you have any question, maybe we'll entertain that later. Praise the Lord. Yes, some women met me after our lecture today concerning circumcision. When a woman is circumcised, it affects a lot of them, especially when the clitoris is cut off. It affects the sexual pleasure. You know, the clitoris contains erectile tissue like in men and it is highly sensitive so for a woman to derive wonderful sexual pleasure when your husband caresses the clitoris no matter how tough you are you will just give in but when a woman is circumcised and the clitoris is cut off it is not easy to tune her on. So, we advise our mothers, although that in this generation, female circumcision has been banned. But to you that has already been circumcised, there are areas to help you. Number one, it is not only the clitoris, there are other parts of your body that can help you to be tuned on. Your husband can give you deep erotic kissing. Your husband can suck your breast. You know, gently nibbing it also. Your husband can combine the two. As he's uh, kissing you, he'll be caressing your breast. And also, some part of the foreshade, the perineal area in a woman, like the in-between, the, between the labia majora and labia minora. It is also sensitive. So,
praise the Lord. So when you go home, in short, let today be a day of exploration. No. After this, uh, after our, our program, tomorrow, make sure as you go home, you and your husband will do exploration of your body. So if you have been circumcised, those areas I mentioned now can help you. And then, for your husband to penetrate, because when you are circumcised, your private part is by what we call fibrosis. So in that one, you must use a lubricant. KY jelly is a very good lubricant. Virgin coconut oil is a very good lubricant. Blue seal Vaseline is a very good lubricant. So any of them, some people even use Ori, shea butter. So any of them that you find useful, it is okay for you. But don't use any Vaseline that is perfumed. The chemical that they use to prepare that perfume, it gives you some irritation. So don't use it. But other things can help you. So that what others that are now circumcised are enjoying, you will also enjoy it. Thank you. We are entering into our next lecture on Christianity and family planning. Christianity and family planning. What is family planning? Is there anybody in our midst? You know the meaning of family planning. Can anybody just give us a faint idea of the meaning of family planning? Okay, sister, tell us. Yes, go on. Family planning is a method whereby a couple can decide to have a required number of children that they can be able to train. And it, is, it, also, it can also involve spacing of the children that is giving enough time in between one child to the other. Praise the Lord. Our sister answered a right. Family planning is the process of controlling the number of children you have by using contraception. By using contraception. It can also be defined as the practice of controlling the number of children in a family and the interval between their births. Reasons for family planning. Number one, family planning will help individuals and couples to choose when they will have a child. You and your husband, you will discuss whether you will be having your child every two years every three years, every four years, or every five years. Number two, family planning will help individuals and couples to choose the number of children they will have. The choice depends on several factors, which include social, cultural, and psychological influences. Number three, the choice of birth control method must be explained to the couple. This is the area I want to explain more. You know, in the society, everybody is a doctor. Your mother-in-law is a doctor. Pastor wife is a doctor. Your neighbor is a doctor. Your landlady is a doctor. Immediately you get married, all these people we are assumed to be doctor. When I mean doc doctor, in quotes. Some people, instead of meeting a qualified medical personnel that is trained in that aspect, they will listen to only gossips. Uh, which one are you using? I use this one. You run to it. No. After today's lesson, I would like each and every one of us to know that what is good for air may not be good for B. 
because our body chemistry differs. In the methods of family planning, we had a sinful and non sinful methods. I mention sinful and non sinful methods because of our belief. The sinful methods are those we call abort efficiency. Abort efficiency means the family planning method that uh, does not prevent fertilization. Fertilization will take place, but embedment and further development will be hampered. That is the one we call sinful method, and we call it an abort efficient. I will explain later. Then we have the non-sinful method. This non-sinful method is the method that does not allow the sperm and the ovum or the egg of the woman to come together. That one is the one we call the non-sinful method. There are different types of contraceptions. Number one, contraception for men. The contraceptives that men use, we have the temporal method and we have the permanent method. Some people have been asking some questions. Why is it that family planning is majorly on women than men? The reason is because Sperm production in men is infinitely greater than the production of ova in women. And then number two, the method of hormonal or chemical suppression of sperm development are much more difficult to discover than that of women. So that is why you see that men have limited choices of family planning, while women have a large number. So, in the temporary method of family planning for men, number one is the withdrawal method, the one we call coitus interruptus. Withdrawal method. Almost everybody in this hall may have, after marriage, practiced withdrawal method. The withdrawal method, we don't call it other family planning because its failure rate is very high. And secondly, it has been causing problems in families. There is one man I know, my patient, they were using that method, and the woman took in. The man filed for divorce and divorced the woman. That he's not the one, he did not release inside. Because of ignorance. So, in the issue of this withdrawal method, it needs a lot of discipline in the man. Before a man releases, there is a sensation he usually feels. Men can bear me witness. My own, I'm telling them as a result of what textbook said and lecturers said. But men know, practical wise, that before they release, most of the time there is a sensation they will feel. And then a disciplined man will immediately remove his uh, private part from the woman's body. So it requires a lot of discipline. And that small semen, some of them can contain one or two spermatozoa. After all, how many sperm does a woman need to be pregnant? One. So if that one just drops before the man releases outside, and the cervical, the vagina mucus, just draw it, especially when the woman reaches orgasm. The thing will just enter and fertilize, especially if it is during the ovulation period. So, we don't advise people on withdrawal method. Number two, use of condom. Failure rate of condom use is about 5%. The dangers of using condom, you know, it can burst. So to prevent busting, we encourage the wife to be the person that will fix the condom when your husband's 
is already erect. When you insert it for your husband, you make sure that that tip, there is no air remaining. If there is any air when he releases, with the tension that is associated with lovemaking, it can burst, and then you can get pregnant. So, but for those that want to use condom, we advise them to use it together with uh, spermicidal jellies. Then another method for men is, um, you know, periodic abstinence. In that one, the wife is waiting for her safe period. Calendar method, temperature method, mucus method, these ones, they are for the wife, but the husband has to cooperate for it to work. Then the permanent method of family planning in men is the one we call sterilization. The vast difference will be caught. The vast difference is just a small tube that carries sperm from the testes to the prostate gland. And so, if a, if a man wants to undergo such, it's, a, it's just a simple technique. Um, uh, our brothers, when you go today, just perpetuate your scrotum. When you perpetuate your scrotal sac, by the age, you feel something like cord, a small cord. That is the vast difference. So, if you want to do family planning, you want to be sterile, what you do is that you go to the doctor, who just use small scalpel, open it, tie it, and cut. It does not hinder sexual pleasure. Your wife, you will still be releasing, but it will just be ordinary fluid. The fluid from the prostate gland. There will be no sperm that will be coming out. The testis is where the sperm is produced. So when you cut the, the vas difference, that one, the remaining sperm, that is, the remaining sperm, they will now go back to the testes. After some time, through the process of phagocytosis, the produced the produce ones will die off. And then after some time, the testes will stop producing the sperm. It does not hinder sexual pleasure, as I said before. But according to statistics, about 2% of men, they feel bad about it. Some of them, they feel as if they are no more, you know, they are no more man. And it is not easy for some men to subject themselves to this type of uh, sterilization. And also, after, for those that uh, subjected themselves to it, they have to have about 12 ejaculations to make sure that all the sperm that has come up, all has been removed before they will be able to be meeting with their wife without her taking in. Then contraceptives for women. We have uh, the one we call vagina dosen. This one, you, you hear a lot of women saying, after meeting with their husband, they will miss uh, plenty of salt and water, and they will now use it to wash their private parts. That is mere fallacy. It doesn't work. Because immediately the egg is released and the woman has reached the height of her sexual pleasure we call orgasm. It will suck in and uh, the sperm have already gone. The, what you are washing off is just uh, the excess ones. Then we have the one we call vagina jellies and creams. The failure rate of this one is up to 35%. So we don't encourage that. There's another one we call the Dutch cap, that is vagina diaphragm. This one is not very rampant in our area. It's usually more over the west. It, it looks like a small cap. Then the woman will go to the doctor who will choose, who will do vaginal examination for you, check the size of your service, and then give you the one that will cover your service very well. Then that one, the failure rate is about 2.4%. 
you know, put it in and bring it out makes it uncomfortable. Then we have the hormonal contraceptives. In the hormonal contraceptives, we have the oral ones and the injectable ones and the implant. The oral ones, we have the one that we call combined pill. Combined pill means it contains estrogen and progesterone, the female synthetic hormones. Any of the family planning tablet that contains the two is highly effective but have plenty side effects. And so mostly these days, the one we call microgenome, the one that contains the hormones in a little quantity, is now in circulation. So we have the oral one and we have the injectable one. The oral one, we have the one that is for 21 days and we have the one that is for 28 days. The oral, if you choose the oral method, it shows that every day you must be taking the tablet whether you meet with your husband or not. And uh, because of... Um, you know, the difficulty in maintaining the tablet, some women are not faithful to it, and it has a high percent failure rate. How does estrogen work, the estrogen substitute or the pill? It prevents the release of follicle-stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone so that your egg may not come up. Then the second one is the progesterone substitute. This one, people that are breastfeeding can use it. But yet, it has high failure rates. And also, you know, it is not easy to be taking tablet every day. Then we have that of in the injectables. So this is an example of the oral pill. We call this one combination three. This one is highly acceptable, but the problem is that it is not easy for you to take tablets every day. Then in the injectables, we have that of two months, three months, one month, six months interval. But because of the disadvantage, the side effects are that of one month and six months. We advise people on the use of the two two months own. This is what we call noristerat. Noristerat is the two two months injectable. I have used it for patients for more than 15 years. Its failure rate is very, very low, about 0.25%. So we encourage our sisters to use this. It helps them. You take the injection just once in two months. The contraception starts immediately after the injection. If you don't want to take in, as soon as you take it now, within one hour, you can meet with your husband and you cannot take in till two good months. It is very cheap and uh, it, it has some side effects, which I will tell us later. And how it works is that it prevents ovulation. It does not allow the egg to be shed out. So, no matter how many times you meet with your husband, the sperm will not come in contact with the egg. So it is very safe. Then there's another method of family planning we call use of circle bead. This is an example of circle bead. It looks like a um, chaplet. It looks like bead that uh, unbelievers wear for beauty. So the circle bead, there is a calendar inside it. The method of how to use it is here. So, but the circle bead is only for women that have regular menstrual circle. I've given almost all of you my phone number. So if you want more explanation because of our time, I may not explain some of them much. 
But if you want to use circle bead, so far that your menses is regular, the rest part is the day you have seen your period. You start to count all the brown areas you are safe. But all the white area you are not safe. And this bead illuminates even in the dark. If Nepa carry light, it will illuminate. So that even if your husband come back, maybe he traveled and he came back to shake his property, you immediately shake your circle bead. If the counting chamber is at the white area, then the man cannot use condom. But if the counting if the counting rubber is in the brown area, you know you are safe. It has a it has calendar inside so that the day you see your period, you will come and circle it in the calendar as a reminder. Then another type of a family planning for women is use of implant, which we call Jadel or Implanon or there are other names. That one is inserted at the upper, upper uh, that is at your upper hand, under the skin. It looks like just a small match stick. Then it has some hormones. On daily basis, the hormones are released inside your system that will help you not to have pregnancy. There's another one we call the intrauterine contraceptive device. In intrauterine contraceptive device, we have soft tea and we have copper tea. Copper tea contains uh, iron. Co no, copper tea contains copper that is emitted gradually that makes embedment of fertilized ovum to be difficult. But we, as holy Christians, we don't encourage people to use intrauterine contraceptive device. The reason is because fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube. And why the, why the IUCD is inside the uterine cavity. So when fertilization has taken place and it comes to embed to grow, it will be destroyed. Indirectly, you have committed abortion. So if you know that you are using IUCD in our midst, please do yourself a favor by coming for us to remove it from you. Is there any sister you are on IUCD? Is there anybody on it? Okay, okay, I have seen your hands. So please, after you can come and meet us, removal of it is very simple. So that you will not think that you are a holy Christian, but indirectly you are committing abortion. And then we have the one we call BTL. BTL is tubal ligation. BTL, bilateral tubal ligation. For women that have had up to three or four cesarean operation, we advise them to tie their tubes. Because going for the fifth pregnancy, you may join your ancestors quick. And God may not be happy that you left his work and died prematurely, maybe out of ignorance. And it is not good for us to tempt our God. So after three or four cesarean operation, please, make sure you subject yourself for BTL, bilateral tubal ligation. After bilateral tubal ligation, we advise women just to live as if that nothing has happened. You know, some women, they will be psychologically disturbed. Hey, yeah, so I cannot have child again. After all, what are you using them to do? We are coming to the aspect of uh, dangers of not doing family planning. Then finally, in the contraception for women is hysterectomy. Hysterectomy means removal of your womb. Maybe you have had up to seven or eight children, 
and some of these family planning devices is not working for you, the best thing is for the uterus to be cut off. Advantages and efficiency of contraceptives. Number one, enjoyment of sexual intercourse without fear of pregnancy occurring at an inappropriate time. Any couple that is on family planning, I tell you, it makes sexual intercourse very pleasurable. You don't fear that you will carry belly. The woman will be very relaxed. Your husband will enjoy you. But a woman that has not done any family planning, any small thing, she's afraid. Number two, before family planning was used, you know, devil have been taking advantage of people, especially men who go from place to place to find sexual satisfaction, thereby committing adultery. It led some men to marry multiple wives, which is against the Bible. Because the Bible says one man, one wife. Family planning is very much advantageous because when a woman has many children, domestic cures leaves her very tired at the end of the day. She cannot even read her Bible, talk or prayer. And before you know it, because she don't have time to pray and read her Bible, she might have lost her sanctification. And if she die in that situation or trumpet sounds, the person may miss rapture. So, but when you do family planning, you'll be able to have the little number you'll be able to take care of. Have you ever had somebody that was ushered into heaven because of the number of biological children she had? So, it is not something that one will brag about. So, when a woman have this uh, pregnancy successively, it may lead to premature death. So this multiple births is not good. You see, some women, if they die in that situation, they go straight to hell because of grumbling, murmuring, and complaining. Without family planning, children are born in large number. These too many children become too much for these parents who may be peasant farmers. It, it will be difficult for them to feed these children. Some of them are not able to be given qualitative education. Some of them even end up abusing God. Some of these children even end up as hooligans and uh, wayward people. Have you noticed that in the society? So this will help us to make sure we apply one of the methods of family planning if you have not reached menopause. But for those that have reached menopause, there is no fear again. The popular others say that an idle mind is devil's workshop. So some of these numerous children, they end up being agents for Satan. When your child asks for school fees, no way. Ask for cloth, no way. Some of them will now join some bad gang. Have you not heard of some pastor children that are thieves? Have you not heard of that? But it will not be our portion in Jesus' name. And all of us, I know we know this adage. He said, cut your coat according to your size. Have you ever heard it? So, indirectly, it is not only in other planets. It is also to be applied in the number of children you will have. Some of my patients, oh, I have four gears, so what will I do? And my husband, they stopped my husband's work since last year. It is only the full stop and selling. And they still want to come to try if they will have baby boy. One of, the, one of our patients, she tried until, if I'm not mistaken, she has seven gears. Last month, she's in the hospital. The husband is in the hospital. One of the daughters was in the hospital. And where is the money? So please, even if you have only gears, there is nobody I had at the gate of heaven who was closed again because they don't have baby boy. Or have you ever had that? 
After all, Philip the evangelist in, in Acts of the Apostles had four gears, and all of them were prophetess. So don't die, you want to have boy, and you continue to burn and burn and burn and burn. To the extent that your income will not be able to take care of that child, those children, then it will not lead you to start to share them. And in case you go to my mama, 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 brother, stay. Frank, I go to my uncle, uncle, brother, go stay. You will not share your children to unbelievers. And before you know it, these children will lack good Christian upbringing. And some of them will die and go to hell. It will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Even in Colossians chapter 3, 16, the word of God said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And even James 1 verse 5 says, If you lack wisdom, ask from God. So wisdom should be applied in every area of life. It is not only in your business or in other things. Also, in the number of children you will have. So no matter how sweet honey is, we know that Solomon says we should not leak excess honey. So no matter how she, having children is very good, family planning is a wonderful aspect of life that every marriage couple should assess. So I thank God for this time. Remember that the word of God taught us contentment. So if you have one, be contented with it. If you don't have, Brother Godwin is coming to teach us IVF and adoption. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Can we gently stand up on our feet? I want you to begin to thank God for this wonderful pleasure he has given to us for us to enjoy our marriages. You can see that if the woman play her part and the man play his part, you can see that adultery, all those promiscuity and other things will not be mentioned among us. Amen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Ancient of days, we honor you. We worship and bless your name. We adore you. We thank you for this time you have given to us. We thank you for the knowledge you have released. We ask that you give us the grace to apply them effectively so that at the end we will serve you in holiness, righteousness, and truth. And at the end, we will make it to heaven by your mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.